got one day to be able to get this whole van panelled all inside, get the flooring done, get the carpet done, get the ceiling done. And that's because you miss 100% of the opportunities that you don't take. And I've had a big opportunity that I've taken, but put this on hold for an entire week. The problem was that company said, you can start next week. That's the only time we can really start doing your induction. You see, the plan has always been to be able to smash this out as quickly as possible. But recently I passed my HGV driving test, which meant I could start driving trucks. The ideal plan was for me to gain a little bit of experience, just a few months, and then drop it down to just like one or two days a week, just a bit here and there, just to tide me over. So I've got today, Sunday, We've it's 10 o'clock in the morning now. We're gonna finish at eight o'clock at night. So we've got a bit of time just there. Tomorrow, I'm in work, I start the new job, the induction. So we're gonna have from about four o'clock in the afternoon until after darkness to be able to get a bit more done. And then Tuesday night, we've got a little bit more time to be able to brush up on a few bits. Will we do it? Well, first of all, it's gonna start with getting some of this big stuff out of the actual camper van, storing it for the day so that we can get the tape measure out and start measuring all the sides. The first unexpected job of this morning was we had a bolt seized on the actual diesel heater securing it to the floor. We need to get that up to be able to get the correct measurements. And I've just spent an hour cutting it out. That's an hour off the deadline and an hour into the deadline. I can already see how this is gonna go. With the diesel heater out, I've took the exhaust off just to be able to get it through the hole. I'm not too sure I like the fact the amount of soot buildup that's actually in that exhaust. The plan was to reuse that, not too sure now. Down at B&Q, I need four eight before sheets of nine mil ply and four eight before sheets of six mil ply, along with a few other bits and bobs, a few screws, a bit of a batten. <laughs> Let's see how much this is gonna cost. There it all is, so you can see. Uh, yeah, we've got four nine mils, four five mils, because they only had five mils. Even no queue where you get it cut, loads of other bits and bobs. And uh, it was 5% off. Now let's get it in the van and get back. The bit behind the shower needs to go vertical and that's because it's a strengthening piece for the shower to attach to. So the way we've done it, we have got a four foot wide, eight foot tall piece and we had it cut by being hewed to the right height. We've got these beams in the roof that we've actually had to trace out and cut the various sections going all the way across. I'll show you better over here. The board is gonna go directly up each side of the beam just there and secured in there, there and there. It's gonna encroach on the window, but we've got a router and that's on order. So we're gonna router basically the edge going all the way around. But that's still on order and it hasn't arrived yet. After cutting out those little angles up in the top corner, it was time to fit the first panel in. We've got to get this cable for the fan for the shower. That's got to come out and go up over the top. It's going to be secured around these little legs all the way around, secured directly to this beam just here, this beam just here, and along the floor line just there. You know how I keep saying that it's awkward because the roof slants in different ways? This will show you. We're using the old panels as templates, but we want it to come a little bit further down. So we've marked eight and a half inches this side, eight and a half inches that side so you can see it pretty much touches the top just there but when you get towards the back look at how much of a gap there is there that goes down to two inches different it dips two inches that's a roof panel did i explain that right i think i explained that right it's the panel that goes at the top all the way down there so it's like tw it dips down 20 um I don't know, two inches at the back. Slowly but surely, panel by panel, using the old original panels as somewhat of a template. We're doing it slightly different this time, but the panel started to get put up. It was getting closer and closer to the deadline and the panels were going up on time. But then I realised a slight problem. Ah, oh, no. The shower vent cable is behind the very first panel that we fitted. Oh, I'm going to have to get the panel off again. Yep, that's right. The very first panel we forgot to bring the cable through. That was an unexpected delay taking the whole panel off to try and reach in and grab that one cable to bring it back out. Little do we know later in the video, there was another problem here. That was crisis averted well. It's a good job we didn't start filling all the screw screw holes in and we only had to pull the top off to be able to lean it forward to be able to catch it to bring it back in thank god for that 
these sections, they don't look finished and that's simply because they're not. What we're waiting for is the router to arrive. It's still not come from Amazon. And then we're gonna be able to shape this wood into this metalwork. So when we carpet, it's just a nice smooth flow. That's all around that section, uh, all around these sections, because that panel goes all the way up and down. That'll give us extra leg room in the bed when we're sleeping sideways and the same on the other side. This was definitely one of those jobs that I really wasn't looking forward to, solely because you've got to be so precise. I mean, yeah, I've made a few mistakes. We're moving on to the ceiling now. See these ribs in the roof? We were going to put six mil ply because that's what we've been told to do. And that's going to, we can draw lines on the six mil ply to see where's the most secure part to go through into the metal so the headliner is up there nice and secure but we've got a fair bit of nine mil long lengths left over so all i've done is five centimeter little struts of nine mil so that we can just go straight onto this and then the headliner can go onto the nine mil and into the metal making it extra secure then it was time to start fitting the ceiling panels yeah amazon's just been this will be my router and the bits so that i can get the side panels done with the window tell you what the way they've told me to do the ceiling um, lee at van's adventures it's actually quite it works now you see the evo designs ceiling it's four panels and then there's like a big rib that goes in the middle and most people carpet those ribs and all the ceiling panels and then put them up and they end up mismatched when you've got like a matching headliner that runs all the way down well lee told me stick some the wooden beams up which you've seen me do already and then put the panels up on the ceiling 50 50 on those beams you can see what i mean just there and it actually works. That's a nice solid ceiling. It's only five mil ply on nine mil struts, but those struts are then bolted into the actual ribs on the van and it works. So now I'm gonna get a completely flush headliner the whole way down, which is great because my headlining has a pattern. Ooh, let's get it open. <laughs> God, it's always harder to open. So there's my little palm router, perfectly fine there is all my little bits so i failed uh, so i failed i know i failed but i'm still going to crack on let me talk you through exactly how i failed the idea was to just put the router in run it to the edge of the metalwork and the metalwork will guide it all the way around the metal the woodwork giving it a nice smooth curve at the exact right place we wanted and for want of a better word it did work but it took three hours to do one piece so now I'm going to get the circular saw, set it to the exact depth of the wood, probably a millimetre shy. The original thought was to literally overhang the woodwork and then just get the router and just go... But it didn't work like that. It ended up doing stuff just like this, so it made an absolute mess. We managed to get this side kind of down. It's still bumpy all over the place, so we still need to sand that down. But that's the sort of logic we're going for, where we can carp it up over that curve and meet the same curvature of this part of the metalwork so it all goes into one when we've carpeted problem is it took about two hours to be able to get that board from sort of there down and then we thought right we'll just carry on and do this bit didn't work took ages took too long van conversion is all about problem solving get the tape measure put it underneath the board measure up exactly how high the boarding is to the metalwork mark out the line on the wood run the circular saw that set a millimetre shy of the thickness of the wood all the way across and see if we can just pry it off and get a nice sort of i don't know it'll make it easier to be able to just route to the corners then the corners they're going to be a bit funny so i might just have to go like that and then route to the, the edges in Now, being my first time doing that, I did make a few mistakes, but it definitely looks a lot better. So you can see, we've nicely routed the edges all the way around. We did mess up with a big chunk just there, and we've messed up with a little bit of a chunk just there, but I'll tell you what, we're probably just gonna fill it. It's gonna get carpeted over anyway, but the window does look a lot better now. We've done the exact same thing on those panels just there, except we've taken out a few of the screws along the bottom end. So hopefully we can lean it out and just get them cut a bit nicer. As you can pretty much tell, we failed. We got around that window done, one of the exits at the back, and the other side's just not even been touched. Quite frankly, just ran out of time. You see, I was rushing because I was working away in Penrith. Well, I'm currently in Penrith. Well, I'm not at the minute. This is the end of my first day of driving a truck in Penrith. And I've just finished work. It's quite simply picnic time right on the banks of Allswater. Do you know what? I have not used this van as a camper van for best part of, or not used it as a camper van 
for recreational use other than work and stuff like that for quite a while so i'm in penrith let's go to the north lake district it's half five at night so it's gonna get dark soon i'm not gonna go on any mad adventure and this is one of the perks of working out of penrith i get a nice early finish i get to come sit down here chill out i've got snow cats mountains all's water just there yeah, i'm still confused to why they call it the lake district when there is only one lake in the lake district bonus points to whoever can tell me what lake that is the problem i've got is i can't even progress with this camper van build because i don't have 240 electrics to be able to use the power tools i have to wait until saturday when i can get back down to the northwest to see danielle spend a weekend with her and carry on converting this i think the only job that i can do over the next two nights while i've got the camper van is the corking all the little screw holes i can cork them up the odd little gap between the woods i have to fit a ceiling fan over where the shower is going to go that just means i've got to cut a hole up that corner somewhere i've got the max fan dome to go above the shower i still need to plan exactly where that's going because again that's going to have potential problems you see the little bars between the solar panels i've got the uni strut holding it all up well those little bars sit near enough where i want the fan to go so that might be um an awkward one i don't know we'll cross that bridge when we come to it for me however i'm going to be chilling out in the lake district having some snacks and loving life might go down to the lake and have a little play around as the sun's setting uh, time to head back to the lake district but i'm being stalked by another crafter so look, check him out in the mirrors it's a proper cool crafter it's quite cool to see a couple of crafters running in tandem together around the lake district i have no idea where i'm gonna go though i'm heading over towards all's water again you've got air of fools i might go and have a little plod up there we've got about an hour and a half worth of daylight left oh my crafter buddy's just left me but hey i pulled over in the same spot as last night because there's a wainwright over there and there's a tiny road that goes up to it called i think it's called the horse the house something like that and looking at google street view it looks very narrow and i've always wanted to go and check it out because there's a lovely park up there and there's a windy little mountain pass that's like single lane traffic i've always been too scared to go up there shall i go up there now i've got a little bit of time i've got enough daylight just seeing a sign that said single track road ahead unsuitable for large vehicles no through road after martindale i think that's after where i'm going but I've, i'm not just doing this off a whim i went through google street view and i followed it every step the whole way and the majority of way there was a giant horse box in front of the camera car that was doing it so that's gave me a little well that's the solely what gave me the confidence to come out and actually have a play trust me to leave a sticky mess on the windscreen from the sat nav see that blue sign single track road unsuitable for large vehicles so this should be fun there's farms down here so that must mean farm machinery comes down oh i hope there's going to be no low trees i saw some low trees on google street view and um i kind of don't want my solar panels to get battered one slight move and i'm going to end up in the drink we need some tense music <laughs> Yeah, copyright claim. Definitely 100% a single track road. I'm starting to get quite nervous because we're only half a mile away from the park up. We're at lake level and we've got to ascend. This park, this spot is really high up. So it, this mountain pass, I'm hoping it's not just like a vertical climb. That's why it's not suitable for large vehicles. Just turn this corner and the floor's gone dead wet because the lake is literally right next to us. Just look at the water pouring out of the mountain right down onto the road. Oh, you hot face. Can I scoot into that spot where the water is or is that going to be too soft for my van? Um, I don't know. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You were brought up in Huggies. I can do it too with can do. Hey, we got through it. Oh, I'm glad that was hard ground, but I can start to see why it's single track road. Oh, it's starting to come out the foresty bit. I wonder if this is the bit that goes up the mountain pass area. Oh, I don't, oh, the view it, over this brow. I'm just gonna drive up this driveway and then yep she's got through so now i can reverse back oh this is tense 
I mean, granted, it's that time of day where a lot more cars are going to start moving, but wow, that road, that scenery, oh, oh, there's all's water. That's the one we're going to go up. Wow. I'm so glad that there's not a car stuck behind me because I can just leisurely enjoy this while still being extra cautious. Here is the start of the mountain pass. This is the bit that concerned me the most on Google Maps because there's tight hairpin hill bends where you take a hairpin and it's just on a hill. A bit like this corner that I'm going around right now. So look, tight little hairpin bend. I'm literally, I kid you not, in first gear. And I've just got to plan it really carefully because the VW Crafter has got really, really bad steering lock. So I'm just gonna plod up in first gear. Look at this for a hairpin. And I think, oh God, that is a tight one. Oh, but I got up. Now I think we've got more because it goes up there and round. That one up there is the scary one. So bear with me while I do that. Proper shaking, that was really, really fun. Quite scary, quite tight. Wow, right, hell on foul is right in front of us. There's the van parked up anyway. It was time to don the boots and start ticking off another Wainwright. I am so stoked to be back out actually doing some adventures. It's been a while since these boots have been on my feet and boy, I can tell them. This is what I love about mountain climbing. No matter how high you go, with every footstep, with every meter incline, the views just get better and better and better. I've only been at this hike for around about 15 minutes and the views are already absolutely incredible. Just look at that. I'm not actually that far off the summit right now. It's just around there, around the corner. But I've just had an epiphany. The other side of that should be Allswater. The other side of Allswater should be Helvellyn the Helvellyn mountain range. I've seen photos that that is absolutely caked in snow. I bet that in this light looks absolutely beautiful. Let's get up there. That information plus the information that I've seen on pictures of the huge trig point on the top of Helen Fell, that's enough to spur me on to get up there. I'm dying to see the Helvellyn range at distance covered in snow. There's the trig point just coming into view right now. Let's go see the view. Let's go. You can really hear the wind picking up now, can't you? Oh, yes. Wow, that's massive. I thought that was dead small. It's like 10 foot tall. First off, whoa, all's water. Just, oh my God. So, yes, how Valen's covered in snow. With the cloud cover, you could just about see it. Helen Fell, Wainwright number 45 for me. Just look at the view. All's water is way bigger than you'd ever imagine. Just look at that. Oh. Whoa. Right, 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 right. Let's get behind it. Let's get behind it. Oh, that was blowing again. This is amazing. Proper, properly amazing. It's definitely spurred me on to get my van finished as quick as possible so I can live it like this in style so much better so much more easily i'm going home tomorrow after work i'm starting early so we can get an early finish head back down to wigan and then i've got saturday and sunday to get a lot done on the van and i'm hoping to at least get the bed in and some of the uh, carpeting the flooring the ceiling maybe even some of the i'm gonna sit just here on that rock and watch that view just see to most people that's just a view to me that's alive that is just alive with animals creatures mother nature wind water oh i love this after this head back down chill out for a bit oh wait i've got to drive back down that road <laughs> we're back in the northwest back on the van build because this is important we've got saturday and sunday to get the majority of this usable solely because I'm in this van all next week with work, so I need to get at least the boarding done, the heating done, and everything else that I need to get done to be able to make it livable. First job this morning was I checked the ceiling fan. That's the shower fan that's going to be going just there. I got it all out of its box to uh, have a look and see the proper installation instructions. That's when I found out it has a light on it, so I need two cables running up to my shower extractor fan, not just the one. Problem was, the van's boarded up that side. So I've had to take down this 
board just slightly to be able to run a cable through down that pillar just there and back out underneath the garage. Just a case now of feeding the cable right the way up to the top and I'm actually just going to go easy and run it straight across here. There's a little hole in the side of there straight through there and join it up to this cable just here. With this boarding just up here you can see what we've done. It used to come down to here which basically got a mini circular saw and just basically cut it up and then routed the edge to get a nice smooth bevel. To get it even smoother later we'll show you what we're going to do. But that's the job for now. I've got to do that part and all over that part. And that was that. It was just a simple cut. The way we did it, we measured from the bottom of the wood up on the inside, then marked on that measurement on the outside, cut it with a circular saw, went round the edges with a router bit, and then this was the finished result. Yeah, I'm covered in sawdust, but I'm proud of it so far. We've added two more extension pieces going down. The mattress comes to about there, so you ain't gonna see what's underneath it. We're gonna tape and seal all the sides where it meets the actual bodywork, the metalwork itself, so we get a nice smooth transition. It's already been routed to give it a smooth transition, but we can make it a bit smoother. And then when we carpet over the top of it all, it should, in theory, be quite nice. That's the plan anyway. Now to start the max fan dome that's going to be the extractor fan for the shower. That's going to go in the roof. So we've got to get some of the um, insulation down so that we can figure out between the ribs on the roof where exactly that fan's going to fit. This is the fan itself. It comes in three different sizes. So that's the extractor fan itself. That's the channel that comes down through the inside and there's also a light that goes with it too. I am, however, a little bit nervous of the fan hitting the Unistrut roof rack though. See, now, ideally, I would have preferred it there, but you can see the rib in the roof just there. Well, the fan itself hasn't really got a flexible rib where it seals over. So that is the only really place it can go. If it goes there, then it overhangs the door of the shower. If it goes too further back, then it hits the shower wall, which will be about there. So that's going to be towards the back end of the shower. That's where the cross members for the Unistrut go sideways. The other one, I've measured it to be about here. So in theory, in theory, that should clear the solar panels on the roof. Not the perfect location, but it'll do. <laughs> I hope. So we've got the small drill bit, and what we're going to do with that is drill all four sort of north, south, east, west spots, and then go up on the roof. We can take the cowl that sits on there, go up on the roof, stick it on, mark the outline, cut that, and then we've got this little tiny notch just there. That is for the cables just there. I guess it's now time to go up on the roof, remove the solar panels and get that cut. I've just propped up the solar panels on this side with some spray glue, but look what I've just found. Scissors that have been there for, oh, I don't know, six months they're from when when i cut this butane tape to go underneath the uni strip roof rack but there's my holes there's one there's one there's one so i'm just basically gonna rig them all up and uh, see where we end up we've quickly just bored a starting hole down into a slightly bigger hole so it does fit in the hole perfectly fine the wires going great but we've got this little lip here and it only just catches on both sides you can see just there it just catches so what i'm going to do i'm just going to basically file down this edge slightly flat uh, and the other side just so it fits perfectly snug and just with a piece of sandpaper that fits on really really nice now i just need to clean that sicker flex and get it screwed down all before that big rain cloud comes and gets me standard 522 sicker flex i don't need to treat it because it's an aluminium roof i always go over the top when it comes onto roof stuff. So I'll be putting a massive big bead all the way around. I can always wipe up any excess that does uh, go into the inside. It's not pretty by any stretch of the imagination, but I've just got to take the plastic film off the top and let it cure then secure the panels down. Now I know it will open because I've already measured that. I've just got to make sure this box comes this way just a bit with the solar panel and then it'll clear it. And inside, it just looks like that. So now all I've got to do is put the ceiling panels on. Well, I've got to get them cut, measured. Hopefully I measured that piece correctly so it fits on nicely. Same with the Max fan. I've not bored you with the next bit, but we're starting to panel the ceiling out. It's a bit of a tedious job because we want one complete flat ceiling with none of the um, 
Evo Designs blocks going through it. So it's about matching them perfectly on the rails. And then see how, like just there, we've got a little bit of a lip. We don't want that, so we've got the sander out. We're going through that. We want it to fit perfectly, so we've got the Dremel out. That's fitting it up perfectly back there. Like I said, it's going to be a high-end conversion. So we want to have all the joints perfect. I say that in the same sentence as my new diesel heater has just arrived and I've gone for the cheapest one on Amazon. That's solely because my one, the one that's all carboned up, is still usable. It was still working perfectly fine. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that one, whether to keep it as spares for this one if it breaks, because they're exactly the same, or whether I can do a video basically taking apart that old diesel heater just to sort of it'll be interesting to see what it's like inside after a year's worth of use but the light's starting to fade so i'm going to crack on through the night like i said i have got to get loads done before monday which today's saturday uh before i go back up north to start work again where i'll be in the van i'll show you what it's like tomorrow we've got the cheapest diesel heater on amazon 68 quid we've got all of our carpet in there, some more stuff there, loads more stuff just there. And today is the last day to get this van sorted. Or at least sorted to a condition where I can actually sleep in it next week. I've got to do the boards under the bed, both sides. Smooth tape and seal all around the metalwork, even over there and over there. Install the flooring and the diesel heater. Problem is, it's been raining all morning, all night, and it's still raining now. To fit the diesel heater, I've got to get underneath the van and drop the fuel tank to be able to tap into it. First job was get the old lino flooring up. We had to then go over, give it a bit of a clean. We then done the garage panels. The panels are wood underneath the garage, fed all the wires through them and all the pipes that come through them too. Then it was clean and tidy, ready for the flooring to go down. The van looks so big and so empty and bare with nothing inside it. But we're ready for the flooring. I actually messed up and ordered too much of this flooring. It's the outro flooring. It's heavy wearing. It's basically the flooring that you have in hospitals. It's super thick. It's easy to go down. You just lay it down, cut it to the right size with a really, really sharp blade. Cut out all the pipes that come through the floor, all the bits and bobs you need to work around. And then, hey presto, you've got a decent flooring. It came highly recommended from a load of high-end camper van conversion companies. It sticks down to the floor with high temperature spray adhesive and I got it from Harrison Trims. It's now time to sort out the diesel heater. As you can tell, something fell on my face. I was moving the floor and around and it went dunk straight on my face. Anyway, it's time for the diesel heater, but we have a problem. It's absolutely chucking it down outside, but I'm just going to have to grim and bear it solely because I need the heating in for tomorrow. 12 hours to be precise. Heating's going there. I've got to go underneath and have a look to see where it's suitable with the cross members and stuff. Whack a small hole straight up in the centre so I know where the centre is. Put the turret plate on the floor here. Mark out where everything goes. Drill through on all the different dots and stuff so that I know all the holes are already there in place. And then I'm going to go through with two different 64mm holes which is going to create the hole going straight through the floor. I'll be able to put the turret plate on get everything sorted get it all plumbed in fanny's your aunt jobs are good and bob's your uncle let's see if it works like that and with that securely fastened down we've got the fuel pump cable running down below we've got the exhaust running down and the air inlet all the work now is underneath the van light's starting to fade though so the footage might get a bit sketchy so i failed a bit and not badly, I'll get to that in a second, but half two in the morning, my alarm went off, I had to shoot to work. If you didn't know, I've started working now in Penrith so that all through the summer I can be in the Lake District. I've just finished a shift, I am absolutely exhausted. I drive trucks now, it's quite cool. But I wanted to show you this little park up that I've got, and it's only 10 minutes away from work, and then I'll go through the rest of the work that I need to do to get this sorted. There's the van. Looking as cute and as cool as ever. It's quite good when you're far away because you can't actually see the dodgy sprayed mud all up the side, all over the back of the mirror. But you've got the Blencafra range up there. Can you see that sharp piece just there? Well, you never guess what that's called, sharp edge. If you don't know what it is, Google. You've got the cold ale over there with some snow on top of the mountains. It is deathly quiet. I say that at the exact time a car's going to come past. I've been parked here for 45 minutes. That's the first car I've seen. But just listen.
it's just me and the bird for tonight let's show you inside because obviously i've had to set it up ready for coming away because i'm in this all week now and i've got other bits that i need to do and bits yeah let's just go in shall we so we'll open the door up and as you can tell it's still an absolute show i got the diesel heater installed partly i've got to finish the electrics but i wanted to tap that into the fuel tank which is under the floor just here i was too fat to fit under the van to connect it to the fuel tank so I, for now i've gone back for the internal fuel tank that i had i've put that back in plumbed it all in that's semi full of uh, diesel i've brought my two ally time lithium ion 200 amp hour batteries so i'm gonna have 400 amp hours they're going to be living under the bed somewhere. Not quite decided what yet, where and stuff. I've got to connect the positive uh, and the ground from there up to those cables just there. They come out over there. They're all labelled. Connect them to the fuse box. Connect the fuse box to the buzz bars. Connect the buzz bars to the battery. I might just do a temporary fix for tonight. I've got my box with all my electrics, all my Victrons, my Wi-Fi. Everything that I need electrical-wise is in there from the old van. I've got me... What's this? Oh, that's me Trellino composting toilet i've got a uh, cctv cameras which i want to install while i'm up here they're in that box i've got my toolbox and more electrics over there i've got my bike that bag just there is full of carpeting there's a bike track that runs along that tree line so i want to try and ride that over the next day or two that is fully dependent on if i stay here for another night or not i'm going to be leaving here in the morning to go to work and then the day after i might try a different spot i've got a couple pinned on the map we're just going to play around and see New van means new bedding. We've got new pillows, new quilt, new bed sheets, new mattress. So I'll have to set that up as well before it gets dark because I don't have any light. I've only just thought of that. Damn it, I've got no curtains either. This should be fun. You want to see the most rudimentary setup for a diesel heater you've ever seen? I'm not happy with this, but it's going to have to do for this week for the sole purpose. I was supposed, to, I was coming down here and I was going to set up the full battery system up to the fuse board the charge coming in and everything i've got all the cables i've got them all cut to size crimped heat shrinked everything ready to just connect i've left them at her house haven't i so i've literally got a battery a fuse box connected to the diesel heater cable which goes there to that mess just there which i've now got to sort out all the wiring but it works and it's on i just need to figure out how to properly use it i know how to use it from the remote control but that's about it anyway the bed's still got all of its plastic wrapping on. Let's get that sorted next. I'll do one of those stupid transition videos that go whoop to that. See, I told you it's not going to be very good. And that's because it's dark outside. That heat is proper, proper good, you know, proper powerful. I'm going to have to be careful how much I put that up in these really quiet remote spots. But just look at that for a view. How absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful is that? And apart from my heater... That's actually quite loud to be fair. I'm really gonna have to sort that out. I'm gonna get my head down guys, subscribe.